Hi everyone, we'll be waiting two to three minutes before starting the webinar, uh, simply to accommodate for the rest of the attendees who are in the middle of connecting. Welcome everyone. Thanks for joining us and thanks for being part of our community. My name is uh, Valen Kalika and I'll be your today's host. A few reminders before we kick off our session. Um, if at any time you're experiencing issues viewing the stream and are using the web browser version of Teams, please refresh your browser. If you're using the desktop app of Teams, please exit and rejoin. Uh, please note that this webinar is being recorded and will be shared publicly. We will post the recordings on our community at aka.ms slash security webinars. Uh, closed captions in several languages are available during this uh, live broadcast, and you can enable them by clicking on the CC button located at the lower right corner of your screen. Uh, feel free to ask questions at any time by typing them in the live event Q&A window by clicking on the ask question button. Be aware that any questions you will be posting will be publicly visible. However, if you prefer, you can post your question anonymously by checking the box uh, right below where you enter it. We often get many questions on these webinars and uh, we will do our best to respond to all of them in real time. In the event, if the answer was not provided or if you may have additional questions post this event, please don't hesitate to raise them on our Azure Security Center forum at aka.ms slash ASC community. If you're listening to this after the fact, that as a recording, that's also a great place to ask a question. We love to hear your feedback on how we can improve these webinars, and you can do so at aka.ms slash security webinar feedback. I would also like to invite you to join our public community by visiting us at aka.ms slash security community. That's the best way to ensure you don't miss any future webinars or major announcements. On our community, you can speak directly to our engineering teams that create our security products. You'll be able to influence our product designs and get early access to changes by doing things like participating in private previews, which you can sign up at aka.ms slash security PRP. You can request features give feedback, review our product roadmaps, register for events, or join webinars like this. We believe that the best way to improve our products is by removing any barriers between you and the people that create them. 
So we hope you'll join us. In today's session, Hassan Abu Shaili will go over the key points of using Azure Defender for storage to help you protect data in your Azure storage accounts. Hassan is a program manager with the Azure Security Center team, and uh, without further ado, I will turn it over to him. Hassan, the floor is yours. Thank you, Balon, and thanks everyone for joining. Uh, as Balon mentioned, in today's webinar, we'll be going um, through Azure Defender for Storage. We will we'll start by um, a brief on the common threats on cloud storages, then dive into Azure Defender for Storage, then zoom out to the bigger bundle of Azure Defender, offering of Azure Defender and Azure Security Center. So with uh, the massive adoption of cloud computing and the huge increase we're seeing on adopting cloud storages, uh, and for different applications, we're seeing a lot of, um, in, in a lot of use cases, customers use cloud storages for, for web hosting, for archiving, for data analysts, analysis and other use cases. And with more and more sensitive data and uh, business critical data are being stored in, this, stored in these storages. And with this increase, we're also seeing the increase in cyber attacks on those cloud storages where attackers um, try to access or um, manipulate the data stored in these storages or try to encrypt them and, and ransomware attacks that we've been seeing recently. So there's a different uh, uh, attack vectors in storage accounts. And here we can see uh, some of these um, some of these techniques used to exfiltrate data or to get data in storage accounts. This is from the Verizon's data breach invest investigations report, where we can see that the split between, for example, external actors and internal actors in terms of the malicious access to these storage accounts. Uh, we're seeing that there is breach, breach that use anonymous access on storage accounts that uh, shouldn't be uh, accessible anonymously. Um, we're seeing access with compromised credentials that we can identify, you know, when we see that the access is coming from suspicious IPs or from unusual locations, etc., and breach using uh, phishing, uh, phishing content, which uh, attackers may host on uh, cloud storages. Um, we, we also see some uh, breaches and, uh, and attacks coming from internal actors, such as using uh, <coughs> a privilege abuse or doing that exfiltration in an unusual way, stuff like this. Uh, we've been seeing the past year and the, the preceding years we've been seeing uh, we've seen we've been seeing a lot of huge attacks on uh, cloud cloud uh, data in general and the cloud storage in specific where customers or attackers um, successfully got and reached to sensitive data hosted on those uh, storage accounts. So Azure Defender for storage is uh, part of Azure Defender offering which is integrated in Azure Security Center. It basically adds an additional layer of security to better protect storage workloads and provides contextual alerts upon unusual and potentially harmful attempts to breach your storage accounts and also provides recommendation to harden your storage environment. We provide that Defender for Storage, we provide two main things. The first, the first thing is advanced threat protection which gives, which alerts upon, as I mentioned, upon unusual activities such as uh, potential, potential malware upload or detecting of uh, phishing campaigns hosted in your storage accounts or access from suspicious IPs or um, anonymous access on your storage accounts. Or if someone, for example, is doing an unusual uh, data exfiltration or data extraction. So that's the first part. We will see in a minute the full list of uh, the detections. And the other part is the vulnerability assessment, where we uh, help you identify security misconfigurations, such as the publicly accessible storage accounts we just saw. Uh, we give actionable remediation steps, and the security baseline is tuned uh, to your specific environment. And we also help you track your progress in terms of compliance yeah, using the, security, the secure score. And we give security recommendations, which will be we also see uh, in the live demo. So, in terms of advanced uh, threat protection, we have a rich uh, suite of uh, detections, uh, categorized in three categories. The first one is identifying suspicious access patterns. So, if we see uh, access from 
or exit nodes, for example, that you usually use to, to anonymize uh, user identity, or we see access from suspicious IP addresses, uh, anonymous access, unusual location, or if we if we see that the access is coming from unusual or uh, suspicious application. And now we're, we'll be releasing soon is the scanning activities, so we'll also be alerting up on such uh, tools and uh, uh, access patterns as the one we saw that try to enumerate storage accounts and our storage containers and expose uh, data within them. The second category is suspicious activities. So if someone is using is doing malicious activities or suspicious activities on your storage account, uh, whether it's data, data exfiltration or access inspection or change of access permission. So if we're seeing that the access permissions is being changed in an unusual way, uh, relevant to the or compared to the um, baseline of your storage account, we can we also uh, alert upon that. Uh, and also an unusual deletion that we have seen in several cases that there is a bulk deletion. So we also uh, alert on that to help prevent data loss. Uh, the third category is the upload of malicious content. Uh, so uh, there's um, um, scenarios where attackers host phishing content on uh, on cloud storages, especially on Azure and AWS. So it's easier to see. So they get uh, like a um, legitimate path to their uh, phishing uh, phishing files or phishing sites. So we, if we identify phishing campaigns hosted in your storage account, that can be uh, due to user user uploaded content or someone you know reached your um, a publicly accessible container on your storage account or a container that allows users to upload content, we uh, we alert on that. Uh, we also alert upon potential uh, malware or potential upload of, uh, sorry, upon uh, upload of potential malware. Uh, we do um, we do that based on malware hash reputation. So all of our alerts and detections utilize the advanced capabilities to, of uh, Microsoft Threat Intelligence. Microsoft amasses billions of data entries around suspicious IPs and suspicious uh, hashes of malware files, etc., and we utilize that to provide better protection. So the malware detection that we currently have is based on that on the hash reputation analysis. So we do not do uh, like a full full file scan up and upload, but we do provide um, uh, basic capabilities around malware detection. Uh, and also we provide a ways to automate uh, remediation steps. For example, if a malicious file was uploaded, we can you can automate the process of deleting uh, the file or moving it to another container, etc. Uh, so that's it in terms of uh, the detections. As I mentioned, all of our uh, detections are based on the uh, capabilities of Microsoft Threat Intelligence. Uh, uh, the way it works, so you so it's very easy to turn on Azure Defender for storage. It's a one-click enablement in the in Azure Security Center in the Azure portal or through the PowerShell or the, the API. Then all the storage that you have under this, um, all the storage of blobs files and the Gen 2 under this uh, account or subscription uh, get protected. So when an attacker comes, you get an alert, a security alert that uh, you know, upon the suspicious or malicious activity that happened, and then you can either investigate it in Sent Sentinel or uh, do an automatic response or manually um, remediate the, the threat. Uh, so to sum it up, uh, Azure uh, Defender for Storage gives uh, native native security. It has one-click enablement, and it supports the three major um, types of uh, storages, which is blobs, files, and Adelis Gen 2. Uh, it provides rich detection suite as as we we just saw, and it helps responding at scale with automatic responses and with automation of the response uh, process. And it's also centralized and integrated within Azure, allowing uh, native integration with services like Azure Sentinel and additional uh, Azure offerings. Let's jump into the to a demo, to a quick demo. So if I go to the Azure portal and go to one of my storage accounts that is protected with Azure Defender for Storage, if I go now to the security tab on this account, 
I see this uh, this dashboard because uh, this page because my uh, storage account has uh, Defender for Storage enabled. Oh, sorry, it's a demo webinar. If you don't have Defender for Storage enabled on your account, you will get here. You can enable it. You will be able to enable it here with one click. As you can see, I can here see that I have four security recommendations and six security alerts on this account. So, for example, I can see that uh, storage public uh, storage account public access should be disallowed, and I, ca I can go in and uh, change this and to disallow public access on my storage account. So I can see the remediation step, and I I can do one click uh, remediation. Oops. And also, if I it's remediating, so. It, what it does now, it, it changes the, the configuration of allowing public access to the storage account to uh, to disallow. So that way we, we make sure that we prevent uh, public unintended public access to this account, for example. And now if I see, look also at the uh, security alerts, so today I have simulated several alerts for, the, for this webinar. I can see that, for example, I have an alert of potential malware uploaded to, to the storage account, to upload container on my storage account. And when I click on it, I can see the details of that uh, that alert, and I can then see the full the full page of details, including what type of malware was it, and the IP address that did the upload, and the file that was uh, that was identified as malware, etc. So this way, I can see the security alerts from uh, for, for a specific storage account. I will also be able to see it if I go to Azure Security Center and go to the security alerts there, I can see this on all of my, uh, all of the security alerts combined in a centralized place for all of my, for all of my resources. Uh, if you're trying this for the, the first time, you can also try the sample alerts, so you can generate a sample alerts for the different bundles that Defender um, protects. And you can see them just just to see to see how they the alerts look like, or just to try to try the the offering. Azure Defender for Storage is part of the larger uh, Azure Defender uh, offering, which provides includes two types of security solutions to protect cloud uh, workloads. The first one, the first offering, is uh, cloud um, depth threat protection for most of your other other workloads, as you can see here. Um, it's, uh, it includes VMs, web application, containers, databases, and storage accounts. So that's one way with it, protecting the specific types of, uh, of services of cloud uh, offerings. And the other one is the, and the second one is a set <coughs> uh, of, uh, of native uh, bridge threat protection for that applies for every uh, workload in Azure that uses uh, Azure security, Azure service layers. Uh, such as Azure uh, Network, DNS, Azure Resource Manager, and Azure uh, Key Vault. So Azure Defender, to sum it up, it helps uh, protecting all the workloads on uh, on Azure uh, on Azure or managed by Azure in two ways: from one from the service, the layer of a specific um, resource types, and one the other, like another way, is from the in parallel doing it from also the the breadth protection, providing breadth protection. Azure Defender is also part of, if we zoom up, zoom a bit more out, Azure Defender is also integrated within Azure Sentinel and it uh, plays along with Azure with Microsoft Defender to give a holistic uh, security for all the resources uh, that Microsoft offer for. So Microsoft 365 Defender offers uh, protection for email docs, for endpoints, for identities and for apps. And Azure Defender, as we saw, offers the detection for um, uh, for the for the Azure resources, and you can see you can get a holistic view for all the security if you're of the different types, and if you stream your your, uh, your alerts to the uh, to Azure to Azure Sentinel. Um, yeah, so with that, uh, I think that's about it. We uh, encourage you to enable Azure Defender for storage and Azure Defender. Or the other services to protect your workloads both inside and outside of Azure and to also integrate Azure Defender security alerts into Azure Sentinel so you can have a centralized place to view all of your alerts and security alerts. 
uh, you can go, you can, using this link, you can go to the configuration page of Azure, Security, of the Azure Defender for Storage for more information and the, uh, the entire list of recommendations, the entire list of alerts and uh, the other links of pricing, etc. And I am leaving also in the uh, the slides notes as the, the slides with more information about um, the documentation, and the, how to do the alert simulation, and how to do the automation investigation steps. Um, and as the fellow mentioned, we're here to help. I uh, would love to be in touch directly. You can either reach out to us to the, through the community or directly uh, through the email. Thank you very much. Thank you, Hassan. Uh, let me just here see if we have any unanswered questions, although the team here is doing their best to reply. Uh, let's take a look at the uh, last two. Is there any third party uh, threat intelligence integration possible? I see Ron. Ron is trying to reply to it. Maybe you can speak up to that, Ron. Yeah, um, Hassan also can reply. Again, we, we offer built-in threat intelligence for Microsoft as part of our Azure Defender for uh, for, uh, for storage. Um, again, customer can choose to uh, throw alerts uh, to the logs to inject into Sentinels and use their own uh, threat intelligence sources. Uh, but again, the built-in offering we have in uh, in Azure Defender is, uh, we have all Microsoft threat intelligence, uh, uh, which is a lot of uh, very powerful and um, the, uh, TI. So you're, you are benefiting from Microsoft uh, TI. And related to that, thank you, Ron, for that. Related to that one, there's another one about regarding Sentinel and the Defender integration. So once a particular threat is resolved, should it be resolved in a Defender or Sentinel? Um, this is uh, this is another uh, good question. Again, so we are, we have uh, again the the alerts can be integrated in a seamless way to Sentinel. Uh, you can close the alert in uh, Sentinel. We are part of the roadmap. We are planning to synchronize the sync. So once it will close in Sentinel, it will be closed in uh, in uh, in Defender. Uh, but currently, again, you need to close the alerts in both areas. But we are working on uh, synchronization between those uh, states. Uh, perfect. Thank you. And of just course, add, uh, yeah. Just sorry, one more thing to that. Yeah. You, you can still investigate the alerts in Azure Security Center. So the screens that we show, we see, we saw earlier. You can still see the information and the remediation steps inside of Azure Security Center interface. And as Ron mentioned, if you stream that to the to Sentinel, you can go and you know have the full investigation in Sentinel. Thank you. And uh, I just posted a link here for the pricing models because there was a uh, question regarding cost. So you can please feel free to use that link. And uh, let me see here. OK, so here's the another one over here. How many signatures present in a Defender? And that's one. Second is, what is the percentage of giving the success rate of a true positive alerts for now? So what was the first part, sorry? Uh, how many signatures are presented in Defender? So I don't think that we have an answer for that number. Uh, we are using uh, an aggregator within Microsoft that has uh, many millions, I would assume. Um, and so I, I don't have a number, but anything that's out, that is out there, we compare against. Again, this should not be considered a true anti-malware solution. It's just scanning for full file hashes. Uh, we're working on a more complete solution for anti-malware. Thank you. Thank you for that. And this last question also related to malware and ransomware, so that's already taken care of. Just wanted to provide some reminders on the upcoming webinar. So this uh, this Thursday, we have a Microsoft Cloud App Security team who will be taking us through GitHub environment protection that is using uh, MCAS. And uh, 
to review the full list and uh, to register for the to register for the upcoming webinars, please uh, visit us at the aka.ms/securitywebinars. This is the same link where we would be where we will be publishing the recordings for this webinar as well as the deck. And there's some uh, useful uh, information on the Hassan's deck uh, regarding the additional resources and documentations pertaining uh, Azure Defender for storage. Uh, in case we miss to answer your questions or if you think of additional questions post this uh, event, uh, please visit us and post them on uh, our Azure Security Center forum at aka.ms slash ASC community. And uh, I would like uh, to close this uh, webinar by thanking you for some. Well, my dog is working here. Uh, I would like to close this webinar by thanking Hassan to a great presentation and uh, thank you to the rest of the team who helped us answering the questions. And of course, uh, most of all, I want to thank all of you for being part of our community and for joining us on these webinars. And uh, we hope to see you next time. Goodbye. Thank you both. Thank you.